appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is the story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Welcome to Core TV Prime Time News. I am Geft of Gete. In our major story, pandemonium at the University of Jas in Plateau State as lecturers and students flee campus over the sighting of an alleged suicide bomber. Also in this program, Police Service Commission sacks nine officers over in discipline. The All Progressives Congress is heading to courts to challenge what are described as constitutional bridges in the run up to the Jaska government election in Ekiti State. Outside Nigeria, panic as Pakistani health officials rush to vaccinate hundreds of children against polio. And in business news, Nigeria remains one of the top three destinations points in Africa for foreign direct investments. In sports. One of Africa's representatives at the ongoing FIFA World Cup, Ghana, kissed the competition goodbye. It's good to have you join us again on Core TV Prime Time News. Now, details of the news headlines and other stories. There was pandemonium at the University of Jas in Plateau State on Thursday as lecturers and students fled the campus following the sighting of an alleged suicide bomber. Core TV News guarded that the suspect was apprehended by the students as had tried to enter the premises. The alarm raged by the students sent everybody scrambling for safety. However, some students summoned up courage to capture the alleged bomber who was almost beaten to a pump before he was rescued by the school security. The mystery surrounding the explosion at Creek Road in Akpapa has remained unraveled. No explanation has emerged on the cause of the blast, which claimed an unsuspected number of lives. Brownson Mana was at the scene of the blast. His report. Business owners, port users and freight forwarders are usually engaged in businesses here in a normal day. But the explosion which occurred at night made it impossible. The resultant is the beefing up of security leading to traffic jam. The explosion left a fuel tanker a 40 feet container and a car damaged beyond recognition. It has also led to the death of unspecified number of people with blood stains on the ground. So my witnesses say the blast is beyond an accident. The fact that we are witnessing this one in Lagos is very glaring, even to a layman, even to somebody that is very blind. You know, this is not a tanker or gas explosion as claimed by the you know, Lagos State Police, Com Police Commissioner, because I read it on my Twitter that uh, it was a gas explosion and, you know, all blah, blah, blah. Everybody can see. Because if it was a gas explosion, you can see the truck here. Definitely it would have been blown off. You can see the buildings, about four or five buildings were involved in this. It was a massive one. It was a massive explosion. I mean, the carcass of the car, right in the middle of the road, there was a, a, a container that was a 40-foot container on top of a truck. It was, com it was severely dented. And uh, even opposite the, 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 the very scene was the former Enterpri Enterprise Bank. The, 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 the whole front of the place was, was damaged. So, I mean, it was, it was a massive explosion. 
Spokesman of National Emergency Management Agency Ibrahim Fariloye says the agency's personnel were barred from the scene by police saying the issue is beyond their jurisdiction. This is a scene of an explosion that took place at about 9.45 p.m. on Wednesday night at Creek Road, Apapa. Initial reports suggest that it was a tanker explosion, but what we can see here suggests otherwise. It is a call for all Lagosians to be more vigilant. Brownson Uwana, Core TV News, Lagos. Many of the victims of the Abuja bomb attack are now receiving treatment at Maitama District Hospital, the closest health facility to the bomb scene. So it is not surprising that a crowd of people have been trooping into the hospital to see the survivors or to identify capsules of those who lost their lives. Friends and relatives of the Salah Sulaiman, the journalist who died in the bombing, were also on hand to see if they could collect his body for burial. Maitama Hospital is located within shouting distance of the berm scene. So, not surprising, it's one of the hospitals that the victims were rushed to. The facilities are not exactly overstretched, but the medical team are on their toes. Many of the survivors in admission here are people who were quite close to the scene. One of them is Donald, who actually saw what happened. My name is Donald. So yesterday, you know, I walk uh, from Sky Bank opposite the plaza. So yesterday, I went to buy corn of myself to eat. So when I went there, when I went there, I saw a house man driving a Siena. He, he was trying to enter to the way out of the uh, of the plaza. So, so the security now stopped him, tell him to follow the right way. So, so the man was doing as if she drunk or something. So me, when I saw them, that was um, not my problem. So I left them. For seconds that I left them, I saw people shouting. I me to turn back and see what was happening. What was happening? I now found myself on the ground. This man with a head injury still can hear several hours after the explosion. I can't hear very well. You don't say anything you can say. Hmm? So you can hear very well. And outside are people waiting for news on survivors. But for this group of journalists, it's a time to mourn. They are one of our best in the profession especially in the FCT Council of NUJ, have been taken by criminals whose purpose of what they are doing is not known to any of us. But we are gathered here in honor of now late Bisala, our editor, our colleague, our comrade. I was with um, Suleiman. About one hour before he left the office and they went to that uh, axis because it's somehow near our office. And when we heard the bomb, nobody could associate him with what happened until eventually things were unfolding, 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 unfolding. I've known Suleiman for about six years now. He's been a wonderful friend and colleague. He's a, a professional, committed, focused and a very loyal person and a very hard-working person. Mr. Suleiman Bisala was a colleague of mine right from Daily Trust in 2001. We were pioneer staff of Daily Trust and I worked there for 12 years with him. I discovered that he was a very hard-working, strict and disciplined man and we got along very well together because he was focused and a professional. While Court TV was still at the hospital, Vice President Namadi Sambo arrived, accompanied by top government functionaries. He assured survivors of government support and comforted friends and family of those who died in the bombing.
Vice President Namadi Sambo has visited the scene of Wednesday's bomb attack in Abuja to see things for himself. After being briefed by the various heads of security operatives and ground, Sambo retreats that the bombers would not go scot free. The Vice President is now visiting survivors of the bomb attack at various hospitals in the city centre. We will bring you details. To the family of those that have lost their lives and our sympathy to those that are injured. Both here, the incidents in Kanu, and all other parts of Nigeria. This cowardly, unjust act will be defeated. Evil can never be sustained. Inshallah, this administration and Mr. President is not going to leave any stone and turn until we defeat this terrorist. Terrorism cannot survive in Nigeria or in any part of this world. We are doing everything, we are putting everything to ensure that within the shortest possible time, this will become a matter of the past. I want to assure all Nigerians, the government is doing everything to ensure safety of our lives and properties of all Nigerians and our visitors. I want to seize the opportunity to call all on Nigerians also to be very vigilant, to be very vigilant and be very observant and report any suspicious act that they see. I uh, will also ask us to go back to our normal duties, our normal services, and to cooperate with the administration so that we will all jointly succeed in solving this problem. Aside from the cars that were burned, the multiple explosion also damaged two shopping plazas in the area. The windows of surrounding buildings were also shattered by the bomb, by the bomb that left a four-foot crater where it was detonated. But it also generated anger among Abuja residents. We, however, warn viewers that uh, they may find some of these visuals detasteful. This is the third bomb in Abuja this year. The affected area looked like a war scene. Ema Plaza is the main target, but surrounding buildings also suffered collateral damage. The nearby Banis Plaza was partially damaged. Windows were shattered and door frames bent. This man was lucky to have escaped death. All of us were outside there. Me, just of outside. That's my own personal car. So I park it. I just walk towards the car to pick something inside the car. That's how I just hear something. Wah, the thing shift me. And here is another eyewitness who is still in shock. So I was in the uh, first floor when the thing happened. So when I hear it sounds bam, then I turn back to look through the glass up there. What I saw here, it was fire. These shared vehicles in these premises were set ablaze by flying shrapnels from the car boom. Call TV learned that at least one person was killed at this spot. Further down the road are bloodstains and abandoned personal belongings. A crowd had gathered near the scene and soldiers had problem pushing them back. <laughs> this cripple is so angry, he insists he could do better than the people in government. <laughs> Even while the crowd mired around the area, there was a controlled denotation of another bomb, but the authorities are still assuring residents of Abuja for their safety. The Police Service Commission, as in the last one year, approved the dismissal of nine senior police officers. Commission Chairman Mike Okiwo disclosed this at a briefing marking his one year in office. He revealed that 99 officers faced disciplinary action within the same period. 
Also, the Commission considered and approved the total of 99 deferred cases with punishments ranging from dismissals to suspensions. There's also a table there giving you a breakdown of the 99 people who were disciplined. Equally, two of the dismissed senior police officers are to be prosecuted. Five officers reduced in rank were subscribed for the fire and the loss, while one of the officers reduced in rank would also forfeit 37 days' pay. The Commission has rece received a total of 335 appeals through petitions, body of police misconduct that are currently being processed. African leaders gathered for a summit dominated by fears over a rise in extremist groups sowing terror across the continent. From the Shahal to Nigeria, Central and East Africa, armed groups carry out attacks, kidnapping and massacres on a near daily basis on the continent. The summit in Malabo was attended by United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who called for a rapidly operational peace and security structure. The two-day summit in Equatorial Guinea, Sub-Saharan Africa, third largest oil producer, has its official theme, agriculture and food security. However, it has been hard to ignore the barrage of extremist attacks, which threaten to overshadow civil wars in Sudan and the Central African Republic. It is Core TV Prime Time News. We'll take a break now. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghana. Please remain seated and ensure your seatbelts are fastened. You can now turn on your MTN mobile phone data to enjoy a browsing rate of 5 comma per kilobyte with MTN One World. Thank you. Absolutely. Browse like home with MTN One World. Surfing the web from any MTN operating country costs the same like home. Enjoy affordable rates when you call and send text messages. Terms and conditions apply. MTN. Everywhere you go. This one wash challenge will test Ariel to see if it removes stains in one wash. Let the challenge begin. First, chocolate. And juice. We will wash shirts with Ariel. Look, Ariel has cleaned in just one wash. So which detergent removes stains in one wash? Ariel, PNG Everyday Quality Brand. Core TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 A 24 hour news station You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com Click on live TV on our website and watch us live And welcome to Core TV Primetime News To follow us on Twitter Click on Twitter icon on our website And Facebook Click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. 